All right, session four of seven is called How to Argue and When. And I thought I needed to put really on there because I know you wouldn't believe that that's possible. But it is possible. Uh, it requires a couple of uh, change of definitions. And the first one we'll start with is what an argument turns out to be. Every, every, marriage, uh, every marriage has conflict. I tried to give you five. I tried to give you five conflict areas a little while ago, uh, areas in which all of us are going to discuss things that are going to turn into arguments sooner or later. And every marriage will have them. There's just any, no escaping that. And then inevitably, what happens is it becomes a confrontation of wills. I can't believe you don't see my point of view. I can't believe you don't see mine. And we butt heads and our voices get louder and our tone gets nastier. And then if you're not careful, we just start attacking each other. And, and, and at some point, if, if somebody could just turn an off switch on and just stop it and say, what do you want to gain out of this? At that point, we would just say, I'm gonna win. I'm gonna do it my way. And nobody's going to tell me I can't because that's in our nature to win. And so that's what, that's what happens. We, we enter this power struggle in marriage and there's not supposed to be a, remember the design factor from lesson one, we were made to be one flesh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, intimate. And so it's not supposed to be a power struggle, but it is, it becomes one. So I got to redefine something for you. And that's the word argument. Every time we start arguing about a conflict, if it becomes a power struggle, it's because we think an argument must be won. It's a clash and you have to win it. You got to win the argument. But what if we redefined what an argument is? It's not a power struggle a struggle to victory, a struggle to prove my point and overcome him or her. What if we just redefine the word argument? All an argument is, is a vehicle in which we both get to state our points of view. She gets to say this from her point of view, no matter how dumb I think it is, because I'm a man. And then I get to say it from my point of view, and she has to listen because I listen to hers, no matter how dumb she thinks it is because I'm just a man. And then that's it. How are you going to learn what your spouse really thinks and what they are in any other format than an argument if you define argument as just that? This is how I learn her point of view. His point of view is an argument. It's not a power struggle. Nobody's going to win a power struggle. When you, when you win a power struggle, you lose. You may win your point. You lose intimacy. That circle that was in the middle starts closing up on your half, and you're not going to keep his half alive or her half alive either. So when you win a power struggle with your spouse, you, you, you lost. Even though you won, you lost. So let's lay a little foundation here for this lesson. You got to redefine the word argument. It is not a power struggle that demands to be won. It is a chance to voice my, my opinion. This is what I'm seeing. This is what I think is happening. This is what I, I'm afraid is going to continue going. That's number one. Number two is you got to stick to the I rules, two I rules. I don't know why I ever wrote that, two I's. That's not the kind of I I'm talking about, the letter I. Two I rules. If, if you could just practice this on social media, you would be a genius these days. But we don't care about social media as much as we care about your marriage. And in that marriage, the minute you enter that power struggle instead of a chance to discuss, and get my point of view out. If you start losing, the natural tendency is calling each other names. Stupid, idiot, creep, tyrant, bully. You just, man, 
those are the nice ones. You know the bad ones. You can just spew them out whenever you're afraid you're about to lose your point and you're afraid you're about to lose that power struggle that shouldn't be a power struggle. You start insulting. The simplest way to not insult is to remember the other I. Stick with the issue. What's the issue? Well, I gave you five of them in an earlier section. Money, sex, personal habits, religion. What was the other one? Anybody know? Money, sex, family. family. Oh yeah, family relationships. So that's the issue. We're talking about the bill. No, yeah, but we're talking about money. The issue here is how we're managing our money. The issue is not, you're stupid. That's an insult. And, and, and the issue is not addressed in that. All that happens there is I'm still trying to win something. And if I can't win it on logic, I'll win it on insults and badgering. But when you win that way, you lose. Can't win that way. So the simplest way I know how to express this is in these two I rules. You, you just have to, you just have to stick with the issue at hand and, and put a zipper on your lip before you ever start hurling insults at your spouse. And then number three is, and I've taught this for so many years, I don't know if anybody gets it anymore or not. Uh, I think when I first wrote this 35 years ago, probably, I was probably uh, on some committees somewhere and we used Robert's Rules of Order. And if you're familiar with Robert's Rules of Order, anybody can bring something up in your business meeting, but at some point you realize it wasn't on the agenda or if it was on the agenda, we're not going to resolve it tonight. And it's just a gentleman's agreement sort of thing. Somebody can say, I move we table that until next week. And somebody else says, I agree. I second that. And the chairman will say, so done. We're tabling this discussion on why he can't pay his bills until next Wednesday or whatever the topic is. I've only had one family over the years actually contact me and say, that thing really helped us. That one right there really helped us because we quit arguing. We just realized we didn't have to solve it tonight. And that's what tabling it does for you. If you both can just accept and embrace this concept, then when you start that argument, which is what? Just a chance to hear both sides. He said, she said, and you know you don't have to fix it tonight because that would mean somebody had to win right now. Then you're arguing with no urgency to resolve it right now. And at some point, somebody can just say, I hear what you say and I appreciate it. I understand that. I get your point of view. I, can we talk about this again in a couple of nights? You'd be surprised how much advantage you gain to get away from the moment and moods it might create in us and the fear that we're just caving in to something we don't want to do. You'd be surprised the advantage to being permitted to just say, let's, let's just talk about it again Wednesday. I don't know why Wednesday, that's just the day comes to mind. But, but the advantage is now we agree to just step away and our moods can relax and our tension can go away for a moment and nobody lost and nobody won. But now over the course of the next few days, you get to assimilate what he or she said. You get to really think about it and ruminate on it, meditate, it's ruminate. You get to bring it back up like a cow brings up the cud. You, you, I don't know, that's not a good illustration, I don't care. You get to chew on it some more while you're driving to work or while you're in the bathroom or while you're taking a break at work and you're just doodling, you get to think about what the other person said. And that's what we miss in our arguments is we don't have time to think and reflect. So you really need to learn this sometimes above all things, just don't think that every argument has to be resolved right now. Learn to struggle it, I mean, learn to table it. And then finally, I don't know what this has any value to do with anything. It's just a way to try to express something, but I, I put it up here and call it the valve formula, A-E-I-O-U. 
Uh, and, and I put, I just put five statements up here, trying to memorize them or remember them from that. It's just a way of saying, number one, emphasize this in your brain. Don't ever enter an argument with your spouse and think it's gonna turn out negative. I know this is going nowhere, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Well, okay, you just gave me permission to go nowhere with you. You got it? You gotta assume there's gonna be a positive outcome. Start any discussion between you and your spouse believing you can arrive at positive things. And if you preface it by saying, I know you're tired of hearing me and you don't wanna listen anymore and you never do what I say, but, well, you just tuned me out completely. Assume there's a, the reason, that, the reason it's important to say this is because if you don't start an argument without thinking, first of all, there's gotta be a positive outcome, guess what you just did? You started thinking, what could that positive outcome be? And when you start thinking there could be a positive outcome, it changes your tone, it changes your approach, it changes your language, it changes the way you bring it up because you could arrive at something positive. Why just assume the negative about our spouses? Why just know, like all the time before, it's just gonna be a fight? Well, it's gonna be now for sure. Why not assume something better can happen and assume it first before you ever speak and then it'll help you frame the right words. And then E is express clearly, don't beat around the bush. I don't know about other husbands, I can only speak for myself, but I can tell you, I don't take hints and nuance at all. I don't even like TV shows that require me to think. If I have to think, I won't watch it. If it's not blowing up a building or shooting guns, I probably won't last very long. And if I have to think psychologically and mentally too much, I, you know, that's not entertainment for me sometimes. It, it, it is for others, I'm sure. But E, express yourself clearly means don't assume your spouse will know what you're talking about when you're beating around the bush. I, I don't want to bring up something delicate. Well, then don't bring it up. Well, you've already used language that starts assuming we're angry, we're, we're going to not react well to you. Assume you're going to have a positive outcome. Frame the words carefully. Don't, don't leave it to nuance and hint. Say it. The I is identify common goals. That's, that's believing you can come to a positive outcome. So how can you do it? It's going to have to have a commonness between you. You, you both got to win something. Offer your solution, back to the A. You already assumed it'd be positive. Offer a positive solution. And then the U is, and when you do all this framework, remember that sex and intimate bond, always frame it in the context of what your spouse is made of, not your context. Frame that in the needs of your spouse. And when you do that, when you, when you remember, I'm never gonna have a power struggle with my wife or my husband. I'm never gonna try to win the argument. An argument is just a chance for both of us to talk, number one. Number two, I'm gonna to remember to stick with the issue and never insult. And number three, we're gonna always argue knowing we do not have to solve this right this moment. We can put it off. If it's an urgent thing that needs an answer tomorrow, hey, you still don't have to solve it right now. Let's take an hour. Let's just, we've, we've heard it, we've, we've put it out on the table. Let's just take a break. I, here's a good idea. Uh, go separate rooms and pray about it for a few minutes. Go get some ice cream and think about it. Go out in the garage and putter around. Sit in the backyard for a while separate. Anything to give your brain a moment to assimilate. Table it. Don't, don't feel the, the urgency to resolve every argument with a win, because you can't. But you can if you do it this way. And then the fourth thing is just remember to assume that you'll have a positive outcome and express yourself clearly and identify a commonness. Uh, you, you both have got to win in this. So offer a solution that'll let both of you win. And when you do that, based on an understanding of your spouse's need, you'll win and you can win. Both of you win every time you argue. That's the conclusion of session four of seven. And uh, the next session, Five of seven is how to sustain or improve a sexual relationship.